Welcome to the channel, and today we're talking about Lisey's story. I gotta tell you, I was so excited when I first heard about this, that this was coming to Apple TV+. Plus. I mean, check out this roster. It's a J.J. Abrams production. It stars Julianne Moore and Clive Owen, which you last saw them together in Children of Men. It has Joan Allen, Jennifer Jason Lee, Ron Cephas Jones, and uh, who am I forgetting? Oh yeah, Stephen King. Stephen King actually adapted each screenplay himself. Based on King's 2006 book, which I actually listened to on audiobook 10 years ago on a road trip uh, and absolutely loved, I'm reading it again right now. Lisey's story picks up two years after the death of a fictional famous author named Scott Langdon. His wife, Lisey, must pick up the pieces of her grief and clean out Scott's old office. While Scott was alive, Lisey and Scott shared a passionate and symbiotic relationship bound by shared secrets relating to Scott's traumatic childhood and his belief in a parallel world. Now two years into grieving her late husband, Lisey struggles to find her own identity, while at the same time a college professor enlists an unstable superfan to threaten Lisey into giving up Scott's personal papers and unpublished manuscripts. I was able to get a press screener for the show, big thanks to Apple TV's PR team for that, by the way, and so far, I've only seen the first three episodes, so take that into account as I give my spoiler-free thoughts. Now, I'll just say right off the bat, I am a huge Stephen King fan, if you can't tell. And from one constant reader to another, I have to say, I am loving this adaptation so far. It is very faithful to the book. Now, some reviewers have said that it perhaps is too faithful to the book, being a little bloated and tedious. Daniel Feinberg with The Hollywood Reporter says it this way, Lisey's story is indeed overflowing with ideas, sometimes grandiose, sometimes goofy, and these ideas play better on the page than on the screen. But having said that, I don't think you have to be a giant Stephen King fan to enjoy this show. There is a lot to like. This adaptation looks incredible and is much more in the cinematic vein of Flanagan's films and the recent It series than it is CBS's The Stand, which disappointed many. Now let's get down to some details. First of all, the director, Pablo Lorraine, best known for his work on the 2016 film Jackie, absolutely destroys this adaptation. And I mean that in a good way. He just crushes it. The show from frame one is just damn gorgeous. There's really no other words I can use to describe it. Literally, in my notes, those are the first two words I wrote. Now, in addition to the show containing pretty much everything you'd want to see from a Stephen King show, like Easter eggs to other works, chills, thrills, scares, some may find it slow, overly detailed, and full of strange words like Blood Bull and Booyah Moon. And so, if you're not a hardcore Stephen King fan, just be warned that it is a slow burn and very Stephen King. Many people find his novels to be overly long and laborious, and if that's you, then you might think the same thing about the series. But one of the things I personally love about the show is how it feels like a novel, and this novel to be exact. The episodes even stop short and run together, just like the chapter breaks in the book. And somehow, Pablo Lorraine and his team managed to craft an adaptation of a book that looks exactly, and I mean exactly as I pictured it in my mind. Like literally, so many specific scenes from the book play out perfectly in line with my imagination. And I've read other people say the same thing after watching the trailer. Another thing I absolutely love about this novel and this adaptation is how the relationship between Lisey and Scott mirrors the real life relationship between Stephen King himself and his wife, Tabitha. I had pneumonia around the year 2000 and came really close to stepping out. When I came home from the hospital, my wife had cleaned out my study and I thought to myself, I've died. And the idea for Lucy's story came from that. Particularly the idea that writers, when they make things up, they go to a different world. This infuses the story with realism and deep, deep themes of love, marriage, celebrity, and grief. Hardcore King fans will already know that a lot of his works are connected. They share a universe, and Lisey's story, the novel, 
has some potential connections to other King works. I don't know how much the show will eventually dive into that, but so far what I've seen, you don't have to know those things to enjoy the show. The performances are incredible, especially Dane Dehan, who gives an absolute masterclass on playing a unsettling character. Julianne Moore is pitch perfect as expected, and there's masterful filmmaking on display beautiful montages, and sinister cinematic vignettes. Lots of cinematic language, like frames within frames, and it drills down on the main themes of the novel, most notably that in this Stephen King story, memory is the monster. I'm planning to deep dive into each episode as they're released week by week. The first two episodes drop on June 4th, and my quick recommendation right now, constant reader to constant reader, is to absolutely tune in and watch it. It also wouldn't hurt to read the book before you watch the series. If you're fast and use Audible, you could probably squeeze it in this weekend. You can get the Lisi Story audiobook as well as another book of your choice absolutely free using the link in the description. For more of my thoughts on Stephen King, you can check out my video essay about how Stephen King scares you, and make sure you subscribe and click the little notification bell so you can follow along with me week by week as I break down each episode in the series. 